everyone, welcome back to another week of Wonder I Wonder. Come wonder with me. That's right, I wonder. This is a series of videos where you ask the questions and I try my best to answer them as we wander together. But before we begin, if you are a kid in the sanctuary, wherever you are, walk, hop, skip, or jump all the way up front to the TV and we'll watch and wonder together. And if you're a kid worshiping at home, wherever you are, get as close to your TV, computer, or tablet as possible <laughs> and watch together with us. So our question today comes from Eleanor. Yeah, yeah Eleanor. Eleanor. So Eleanor is wondering how were humans made? O M G. That is an excellent question. How were humans made? Well, guess what? Nobody really knows. Almost every religion and culture in the world has their own stories about how and why humans were made. One story says we were made from clay mixed with the blood of the God of intelligence. Another story says we sprouted from the end of reeds grown out of a single tiny seed planted in a lifeless world. Or maybe we evolved from single cell organisms. Or God formed us from the dust in her very own image and breathed her own life into our nostrils. There are so many beautiful and diverse stories about the creation of humans, and it's easy to get lost in it all. Which story is true? What actually happened? Why are we even here? Take a deep breath. Can we hold our hands wide open? and maybe be okay with knowing that we can't know the answer right now. I think so, because we can know something even more cool about humans. We can know what the fullest, most beautiful picture of being human looks like. John began his good news story of Jesus by telling everyone about how the Son of God, AKA Jesus, took on bones and muscles and blood and skin and moved into our neighborhood. And now all of a sudden, we could see a God we couldn't see. So if Jesus is 100% God and can show us who God is, and if Jesus is also 100% human, does that mean that Jesus can also show us who humans were created to be in what the fullest, most beautiful picture of being a human looks like? I think so. There's a real fancy word that we like to use when we talk about Jesus's humanness. It's the word incarnation. Nation. Nation. Can you say that with me? Incarnation. So incarnation is the mysteriously wonderful act of an endlessly knowable three-in-one God taking on skin and embracing a human body. So let's wonder about bodies for a second. What are your five senses? You smell with your nose, you taste with your mouth, you hear with your ears, you see with your eyes, and you touch with your hands and feet and all of your skin. You see, our bodies are kind of like a sponge. They absorb and interact with everything in the world. And without our bodies, we couldn't experience some of the amazing things that are in our world. Like the smell of baking chocolate chip cookies or the sound of cutting kinetic sand with a knife or the feeling of hugging a giant fluffy squishmallow. So here's an I'll play question. What is your favorite thing about how your body looks, feels, moves, and operates? What is your favorite thing that your body helps you do? You can share your answers out loud or you can type them in the chat. What is your favorite thing about how your body looks, moves, feels, or operates? What is your favorite thing that your body helps you do?
bodies. Bodies are so beautiful and intricate and wildly capable and amazing. And guess what? Jesus probably loved all these things about his body too. I wonder if Jesus loved the smell of freshly baked bread or the taste of honey and goat cheese. I wonder if he loved the sound of waves crashing on the shore or the view of a sunset from the top of a mountain or the feeling of a fishing net laced between his fingers. The story of the incarnation is one of my most favorite stories in the Bible because a lot of people in Jesus's day thought the physical things that you could smell, hear, taste, see, or touch were bad. And the gods that Israel's neighbors told stories about would probably never have wanted a human body. But what did Jesus do? Did Jesus choose to stay in his God body forever? Or did Jesus choose to have a human body to live in on earth for a while? He chose a human body! Jesus chose to learn how to read and write. And he chose to walk with his feet and swim with his arms. Jesus also chose to depend on food and water, sleep and shelter, and the womb and breast milk of his mother, Mary. That is so amazing. And I think that that's God's way of telling us that humans are very good. And so is this beautiful physical world we live in. And that we are all worthy of God's great, big, expansive, and inclusive love. Hmm. Thanks, God. So I want to close today by teaching you a fun exercise that helps you pay attention and listen to your body. So go ahead and get comfortable. You can sit, stand, lay down, whatever you want. Turn on your eyes and look around you. Speak in your head or whisper out loud. What are five things you can see? Now turn on your feelers, your hands, feet, elbows, knees, stomach, shoulders, and thighs. Speak in your head or whisper out loud. What are four things you can touch? Now turn on your ears and listen. Speak in your head or whisper out loud. What are three things you can hear? Now turn on your nose and sniff around. Speak in your head or whisper out loud. What are two things you can smell? Now turn on your mouth, lips, taste buds, and tongue. Speak in your head or whisper out loud. What is one thing you can taste? Now take a deep breath in and breathe out. Wherever you are, give your body a hug and say, body, you're amazing. I love being a human and living in this world with you. And if you have any questions about God, Christianity, the world, or anything, you can email them to me. Thanks for wondering with me.